Guys, this is the Aurora Australis, which was an Australian icebreaker vessel. It was launched in 1989 and recently decommissioned in March 2020. It was regularly chartered by the Australian Antarctic Division for research cruises in the Antarctic waters and to support Australian bases in Antarctica. It mainly used to traverse in the ice polar regions. And that is why in today's video, I'll take you guys through the process of constructing a passage plan if your ship is traversing these ice polar regions and what considerations you should keep in mind to keep your ship safe at all times. Together with this video, you should also watch my previous videos on the construction of a passage plan. Uh, the links to those videos are in the description section below. I may not repeat many of these points for uh, this video because in this video I only want to focus on what is required for consideration of your voyage in the ice polar regions. So I hope you enjoy today's video. So this video is part one of the two part series that I am uh, making on passage planning. Uh, the practice of passage planning for polar regions is based on typically accepted standard navigational practice with additional considerations based on the expectation of ice being present. Additionally, you must also be aware of the limitations of navigational equipment and communications. In developing both the initial strategic forward-looking plan and the follow-on tactical in-area passage plan, uh, you as the navigator must consider many factors that are different in the polar regions uh, such as the remote area of operation, lack of nearby support, geographic and extreme weather differences as well as the possible presence of multi-year and glacial ice. As in traditional passage planning that I have made videos on before, this process of passage planning in polar waters also begins with a strategic overview plan and it follows on with a tactical plan that is updated and changed as conditions require. In part one of the video, I'm going to talk about the strategic overview plan and then in part two, I will discuss the tactical plan. So make sure that you always remember for this passage plan, the ice has to be there. So this passage plan or these videos, couple of videos will focus in areas where there is ice prevalent, all right? Uh, this is not a normal passage plan video. The normal passage plan video, the links are in the description section below. Both the strategic and tactical planning will cover the stages of appraisal, planning, execution and monitoring. Before developing the strategic plan, mariners must take into consideration the limitations of navigational equipment on board, as I have told you before, as well as the limitations of the navigational and communication aids that are external to the ship, especially pay particular attention to the limitations placed on the route choice by possible deficiencies in charting. So let's start with strategic planning. This, this phase will rather focus on initial assessment of ice conditions that the vessel is likely to encounter. A route is developed based on information in the appraisal phase. The navigator planning the polar passage will be aware of the remoteness of the region, the support that is unlikely to be available, and ice conditions will be variable with the, within the region. Now support is of course unlikely some support because these are remote areas. You may not be have uh, access to say rescue facilities or tug facilities as quickly as you would in busier and lower latitude passages. In terms of strategic, strategic appraisal, the information and data sources that should be referred will include the navigational data, charts, sailing directions, pilot books, um, historical surface, current ice and weather data, weather imagery information, ice imagery, charts and information, ice service and ice operation center, communication sources, operational guidelines and directives. I will be talking about all of this in my video today and the part two as well. So in addition to routine information sources utilized in open water and coastal passage planning, it is essential that you guys access additional sources of data that provide a complete ice condition picture in the route that you will be traversing. Sources need to include both meteorological and ice data as ice movement is strongly affected by wind conditions. At the strategic level, it is important 
first look at the historical seasonal conditions so as to understand what you are going to expect in the voyage. For example, which routes are more likely to be open or less subject to impenetrable ice conditions given own ship's ice capability. The ice services that cover both polar regions produces historical charts, graphs and data sets that will provide the navigator with this first level understanding. When ice breakup occurs in spring and how and when first freeze up can be expected are valuable questions that historical data can help answer. Additionally, weekly and monthly ice charts along the route should be collected and referred to. These composite charts will provide a more accurate indication of possible variations from historical norms. When thinking or acting tactically, remember that ice conditions can change constantly, day by day and hour by hour. When planning strategically, seasonal variation is important. In addition to ice charts, long-term meteorological prognosis should be referred to as to anticipate likely overall ice movement. As ice formation, degradation and movement are very dependent on weather conditions, it is important to refer to seasonal prevailing and forecast conditions. The relevant meteorological services should be accessed for products that are of value, including prognosis and long-term forecasts. As well as gathering relevant historical data, more current information must be accessed. In selecting a strategic route, the ice navigator should consider the presence of uh, closed ice, consolidated ice, leads, openings, old or multi-year ice, icebergs or open ice. I will define these in part two of the video. Regional ice service and ice operation centers will not only provide ice information, but may also offer recommended or even required ice routing tailored to the ship depending on regional regulations. Reporting systems are in place extensively in both the Arctic and Antarctic regions. Reference should be made to specific regional reporting systems, such as the Canadian Arctic is covered by the Nordreg reporting systems, the Greenland Arctic by the Green Post reporting systems, the Russian Arctic by the Northern Sea Route Administration, the Chilean Antarctic by Childrep, Australian Antarctic by OSREP and sub-regional and port reporting requirements. In both the Canadian and Russian Arctic, the navigator may also obtain guidance from regulations for transit of national waters that are subject to ice. In the Canadian Arctic, the zone data or the zone date system provides a very arbitrary idea of what areas are possible to navigate. If an ice navigator as defined by the Canadian Arctic Waters Pollution Prevention Regulations is not on board the vessel, the vessel is required to navigate within the restrictions placed by the zone date system. In this system, the Canadian Arctic is divided into 16 zones with the most difficult ice conditions assuming to be in zone 1, gradually reducing in severity to the least difficult zone in zone 16. Taking into consideration historical ice data, the zone date table indicates the dates that vessels of specific ice strengthening or ice breaking construction make transit a zone. Using table that are provided, vessels of ice type or vessels of type A ice strengthening intended to transit shipping safety control zone 6, the period may be between say 15th August or 15th October. Outside that window, the vessel is not permitted to transit that zone. Since the development of these systems in 1970s, it has become apparent that the arbitrary date periods of the zone date system often restrict entry when conditions would in fact allow for effortless transit. After detailed research, the Arctic ice regime shipping system was developed. This system uses a basic algorithm into which an experienced ice navigator inputs numeric representations of ice conditions in combination with a numeral that represent the vessel based on its ice class and capability. After inputting the ice type and vessel numbers, the resultant ice numeral represents a go or a no-go decision aid. A positive number indicates the vessel can proceed under the given conditions and a negative number indicates a no-go situation. This system is under constant reassessment as vessel voyage reports are collated and the accuracy of the algorithm is confirmed or adjusted. Later on, I'll show you an example of how it is done.
Within the Russian Arctic region along the Northern Sea Route, the Russian administration has devised the ICE passport. This document takes into consideration detailed examination of the vessel's ICE class, construction and power capability. The result is a description of the conditions under which the vessel is permitted to sail along the Northern Sea Route. It includes details of the vessel's principal characteristics and ICE class, safe speed diagrams, safe escort distances and instructions for use of the speed diagrams. Also included are general recommendations for the master. You can find an example of ICE passport in the Nautical Institute's website as well. Then we have the Polaris, which is the Polar Operational Limit Assessment Risk Indexing System. The Polaris tool is used to assess risk and to provide decision guidance for voyage planning. Using an algorithm to aid decision making, this system takes into consideration ice conditions, the ship's ice class, and whether it is operating under icebreaker support or is sailing independently. It provides three levels of guidance operations subject to special consideration, elevated operational risk, or normal level of risk. The navigator uses a Polaris risk index value, that is RIV table, entering the IACS polar class or Finnish Swedish ice class of the vessel and ice type encountered to determine an RIV. Example of this table you can see is here. And this RIV uses these calculations where you can then determine whether the corresponding risk index value for ships ice class and whether it is safe for them to resume operations. Normal operations assumes that the ship is using due caution and good seamanship. Continued operation is generally deemed appropriate, but due care and attention must be exercised. Elevated operational risk does not preclude the operations, but extra caution and measures such as reduced speed and other appropriate measures are to be employed. Elevated operation risk only applies if the vessel is in ICE class PC1 or PC7. So examples are these. Polaris takes into consideration additional factors when being escorted by an ICE factor or ICE breaker. The calculation for the relevant ice regime should include the ice conditions in the icebreakers track. The final evaluation using Polaris may not be as definitive a guide to a go or no go decision. Unlike a negative ice numeral, which I previously described, a negative RIO does not preclude operation. A negative RIO will indicate whether an elevated operational risk or operation subject to special consideration. Having collected all pertinent data, the navigator then can then proceed to the second phase of actual planning, which is a route evaluation. The first step to determine the overall characteristics of an intended route. The navigator evaluates the historical data to determine what general ice regime characteristics can be expected. These include ice conditions such as presence of pack ice, multi-year ice and icebergs prevailing weather conditions, provision, quality and availability of current ice information and location and availability of infrastructure support and ice support vessels. In conjunction with routine navigational hazards, information from charts and sailing instructions of pilots, the overall route is determined. Here is an example of the Canadian Arctic ice regime shipping system calculation. Every ice type including open water has a numerical value which is dependent on the ice category of the vessel. This number is called an ice multiplier or IM. The value of the ice multiplier reflects the level of risk or operational constraint that the particular ice type poses to each category of vessel. For any ice regime, an ice numeral or IN is calculated by taking the sum of the products of the concentrations of the ice types present in tens in the region and their ice multipliers. You can see the calculation on your screen right now. The term on the right hand side of the equation such as A, B and C is repeated for as many ice types as may be present including open water. The ice numeral is a unique number and you can get it from a bus or rather from a table. Ships using the Arctic ice regime shipping system may only enter an ice regime when the ice numeral is equal to or greater than zero. In terms of track development, once an overall strategic route has been selected, the course by course strategic track is developed. At this stage, the navigator must be aware that individual course and track changes will inevitably be required once in the ice regime as a result of changing ice conditions or availability of support. 
however the following that you see on your screen should be met and you should read it yourself i don't have to take you through that in terms of strategic execution this phase encompasses the development of the necessary tactical requirements operating in polar ice regimes requires alteration to systems watches and routines preparations for operating in an extreme cold environment must be completed well before arrival in the region these may involve acquiring suitable personal protective equipment and clothing as well as alterations to some equipment specific equipment that may be needed may be searchlights and should be confirmed if operational most vessels that are ice classed will have specific ballast requirements that need to be met to ensure that ice belts especially regions of thicker hull plate are at the ice water line changes to crew watch rotations must be arranged to ensure double watches are available for transit of ice regimes or areas of expected low visibility having initially determined a rough estimated time of arrival at the ice edge or first expected encountering ice the estimated time of arrival should be updated the relevant regional authorities should be contacted to confirm provision of latest and ongoing ice and weather information as well as the location and availability of ice support vessels those vessels respond to changes in ice and traffic conditions so their availability may change compared with original expectations finally throughout the voyage towards the polar ice region and before entering it conditions ahead must be continually updated and changes made to the strategic and tactical plans frequency of acquisition of imagery and information should be increased more detailed dairy products should be acquired as arrival in the ice regime nears in part 2 of the video i'll take you guys through tactical planning tactical appraisal and other aspects of the passage plan such as ice routing and knowing about the different or ice transit decision process as well see you soon and thank you for watching this video bye for now